You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. I am grateful to be here as always, and as you know, my name is Paul. I'm grateful to be here as well. I uh, am Rob, and man, just never stop being appreciative of the fact that there's even one of you out there listening, and hopefully there are a lot more. So thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. Definitely grateful for it. And if you found something useful, don't be afraid to share the show with a friend. Um, and also don't be afraid to comment on the remote ID, the proposal, um, as we believe it is industry and hobby killing. Actually, might I just say, you should be afraid not to comment on the remote ID. I agree. That's where the fear should come in. That's Anyways. A, that's a really good way to look at it. That's yeah. very true. Very true. Well, that moves us into uh, today's show. So... You know, a lot of people love flying. A lot of people love flying aggressively, and a lot of people love taking these drones to their limits. And when you are flying some boats, when you're flying cars, or maybe you're just trying to cover a large area of land at high speed, well, can these drones really handle all of that? Can they handle smooth filming at the edge of their flight envelope? Well, that's one question that we're going to be asking. It kind of goes into the last user's question, at least the second part, but this particular user takes it even further. So we're going to be talking about, are there settings um, to remove, let's say, the legs in your uh, video feed? Hmm. Are there settings to smoothen out the drone's flight capabilities? Or... Is it rather user error? All that and more in this week's question brought to you by the drone you fly in. If you're like me and you love to fly and you love to hang out with like-minded people because they intellectually challenge and stimulate you, then you've got to come to the only drone conference, which is actually entirely flight exercises. So if you're like me, you love to fly, you love to try new things, and you love to better yourself and maybe even capture footage that you can use in your own portfolio on an exclusive Netflix set here in the secondary Hollywood of Santa Fe, New Mexico. You got to join us April uh, 4th and 5th in Santa Fe, New Mexico. If you want to work on our business, then you got to join the mastermind right before that. Again, DroneUFlyIn.com. You won't want to miss it. And you know what's so exciting, Rob, is how many tickets we've already sold. It's like halfway sold out. And honestly, that's awesome. It so, is awesome. I'm, thank you for supporting it. And I, I'm so excited for this. This is like, this is my one uh, super exciting event in 2020. And I'm just stoked. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I hope you call, uh, you all can make it. And there is a limited amount of tickets. That's just reality. It has to be that way. It so, sure does. Uh, don't wait. Don't wait. Hello, Rob and Paul. This is Bob at the cold, quiet Jersey Shore. Thanks for this great opportunity to ask you guys questions. So about a year ago, I got a used Phantom 4 Pro. And I thought it was great. But since then, I've learned it's not supposed to be producing these what people call jello effects. And also, in the video, there appears some things that I guess I would call it shocks or what looks like a bird strike. So this is just unacceptable. I need to fix it. And I'm asking you guys for the, the best way to do that, the right way, and if there's any way to hack a fix. Um, I don't know if it's a symptom, but sometimes I notice that I see the a little bit of the landing gear in the corner of the video. Is that normal, or is that a symptom of something bad? I have already tried new props. In my research, I've seen that uh, some people recommend balancing the props by sanding them. Uh, I don't know if that's a smart thing or not. So, are there any techniques... I can use to avoid these issues or or what is the fix for it is there something maybe a setting in dji go or something i can do in dji assistant some people have recommended that i should change the gimbal damper grommets or yaw motor so i know you are a big fan of the p4p 
and I'd love to know what you think about it, about this issue. I know what you think about the P4P. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. You know, you said thank you for the opportunity to ask a question. Well, thank you for the opportunity to answer your question because uh, this show is nothing without your questions. Appreciate you taking the time, the effort, perhaps even the courage. A um, lot going on there. And it's really probably difficult to say when you're talking about a used bird to begin with, right? Because who knows what happened to that bird before he got it. But all that said, what are your thoughts? Um, okay, well, so I made a couple notes here. Um, he mentioned jello, shocks, and then um, the landing gear in the image and quote unquote bird strike. Um, I, in all honesty, I didn't really learn the true difference between the Inspire 2 and the Phantom 4 Pro until I flew both in the exact same shot uh, while we were filming at the Rocky Stadium. Mm. Uh, Coors Field, I believe it is. And if you remember that droney with Vic and myself kind of coming up through the lights to reveal the downtown Denver behind it. So we actually flew that with the Phantom first. And in reviewing the footage, I saw Jello as well. And I saw uh, actually at one point, because I rolled really hard, that the leg came in the bottom right um, corner of the image. Mm. Okay. So then we did the same shot with the Inspire, which is quote unquote supposed to be the same camera, right? And same exact flight motion, very high speed, droney, through the lights, up to reveal. Um, it's in fact, it's, I'm pretty sure it's one of the shots in the intro for the podcast now. We did that same shot with the X4S and there was no jello. Um, so while it may be the same camera, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same gimbal. And I think this is important for people to know if they're considering buying a an Inspire versus a Phantom. If you're in an area with high winds, like if you're in a coast coastal area, you may want to consider buying an Inspire 2 over a Phantom because, yes, you are going to have legs in some of your shots when you're doing um, high-speed maneuvers. Um, and also, let's say you have a 20-knot wind and the wind is coming uh, in this direction and um, we're on a right roll, I have noticed also that the roll limitation from right to left on the gimbal is, a, is at a different angle. So essentially, if you're in a left turn, you can actuate the left turn much, much harder than you can the right, the right excuse me, not turn, right roll versus left roll. Mm. And I will say, you, gotta, you guys got to understand, I mean... It, <sighs> The smoothness of your video does come down to your skill, user, right? But also, it comes down to the capability of the aircraft. And with that being said, the Inspire 2 has a much more beefy gimbal. I mean, if you just even look at the motors on the side of this gimbal versus what you get in the X4S, you can tell that the X4S can handle a lot more wind, a lot more articulation in the flight controls, and a lot more aggressive nature to the camera. Um, I really didn't realize how you know, can the Phantom fly at 40 or 50 miles an hour? Yes. Can it fly at 40 or 50 miles an hour in a 10 knot wind and still get smooth footage? And the answer is no. I mean, it really depends on what height you're at. There's so many variables to this. It's not even funny. But if you're at the top end of the flight envelope, it's totally normal to have gear in the shot. If you're articulating a hard right roll, it's totally normal to have these shocks in the system. That's what happens when you reach the the roll end point or the pitch end point. And can you change some of those things? Yes, you can go in the flight parameters and change uh, maximum roll endpoint, maximum roll pitch point. But just understand when you mm. change those, if the vehicle goes beyond the number that you change for whatever reason, you could literally flip, uh, turn the drone into a flip over and have very significant problems. So. For someone like him, in, in the way that he's asking questions, I would recommend against changing the parameters, which is why I'm not going to mention those uh, parameter names because I think uh, I think it's important to stay away from that. So because are you saying that's for more of a, and we don't know, but you're a high-level experienced pilot is what you're saying. I would say five years or 4,000 flight hours or more. 
gotcha. five years or 4,000 flight hours. Um, that being said, you have to have someone who innately knows the aircraft. They know how it's going to operate. High elevation, high wind, low elevation, high wind. Um, you know, that's the thing, too. That's actually why I'm really grateful that Drone U is in the place that it is, because we're in one of the most difficult environments to fly. Mm -hmm. So we really get to fully understand the flight envelope of these vehicles, which is, in, uh, in my eyes, an innate advantage over all of our competition, which is great, because we're just ultimately just trying to be the best we can. Um, that being said, <sighs> now, are there things that the user can do to smoothen things out? Yes, but understand, if you're at the very top end of the flight envelope, you are going to see some jello, some jitteriness, just because of how beefy this gimbal is compared to, let's say, an Inspire 2 gimbal. I also think that DJI realizes this, and I think that that's why they want you to move up into the Inspire if you're really wanting smooth footage in pretty much just about every environment, every obstacle. That's why also high altitude propellers are more readily available on something like an Inspire 2. Well, and it moves the legs out of the way. It really does can't beat that but you also hit a really important design feature in principle mm -hmm. which is if you look at the h frame style of the inspire the center of gravity is at the lowest point possible in the aircraft which gives it this like pendulum effect where essentially the weight is going to smoothen out everything to allow more stability but also more articulation of the vehicle itself this is also explains why the phantom is more capable than the mavic 2 pro because of cg placement it's all physics it's mm -hmm. all physics sure and frankly i didn't truly understand this until i flew all the aircraft and flew the crap out of them um, to really fully understand that. So I hope that answers his question. But again, this is why I think that subject tracking class is so valuable. You guys really want to check that out. It's on our website now. It's uh, March 6th, 7th, and 8th in Austin, Texas. Um, and if you really want to understand these aircraft, how to fly them close, low, fast, and smooth, don't miss the class. Um, your career will thank you. <laughs> That's right. And again, it's a very small group of folks that are going to be a part of that. And so... Um, yeah, get that leg up on the people you're competing with because you'll have it. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. All right. All right, brother. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Um, I, I, If you guys have questions, I know that we have in the last year, the amount of creative questions that we answered kind of went down. And I'd really like to get back into that. Um, in, in addition, news, um, I'm getting back into the movie game um, myself. So... In an effort to always teach from experience, we have to ourselves be out there flying. And I only took on like eight or nine drone jobs last year, Rob, and that's kind of that's kind of not good. You want to change that this year? I mean, is I, that what you're saying? Uh, well, we're here. We are in February, and I'm already taking on drone jobs. So <laughs> I would say, with a high degree of confidence, that that is correct. So, <laughs> well, like you said, it is very important to us that anybody that teaches for us has experience. At least if they're leading the instruction on a particular class or subject matter that they have experience actually doing that and earning a living, even if it's a small living, but uh, very experiential teaching. And so we need you out there learning, staying fresh, staying sharp. That is so true. We, uh, hey, we also need, we need others out there. I mean, that's why, you know, Vic... He's out there. Oh, man. And, you know, people have been saying that that is the best uh, quality production that we've ever done. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it just goes to show the multiple steps up this production team has taken. And we still have two classes from that we produced last year that are coming out this year, uh, first thing this year. So uh, if you guys thought that was good, wait till you see the solar inspection class. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Definitely putting a lot of time and resources and effort into that. So it's, it's going to be great. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Sweet. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you again for being with us today, listening. Please leave us a review. Please, 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 please. Also, please comment on the remote ID. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.